Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, in October of last year, the Hawaii Supreme Court affirmed the issuance of the Conservation District Use Permit for the 30-meter telescope on Mauna Kea. Following this ruling, the project team submitted its application to proceed with the project. Yesterday afternoon, the Department of Land and Natural Resources issued a notice to proceed to the University of Hawaii at Hilo for the 30-meter telescope. Four unauthorized structures on Mauna Kea were removed this morning. Uh, since the notice to proceed has been issued, we accept expect the TMT construction to begin sometime this summer. We will proceed in a way that respects the people, place, and culture that make Hawaii unique. We are all stewards of Mauna Kea. The state has an obligation to respect and honor the unique cultural and natural resources on this special mountain. That is why I continue to actively support Mayor Kim's efforts to achieve a much broader vision for Mauna Kea. And that is why I will continue to work with the University of Hawaii to make meaningful changes that further contribute to the coexistence of culture and science on Mauna Kea. Yesterday afternoon, DLNR issued the notice to proceed for the TMT civil construction package to commence grading and site prep on the TMT site. This step implements the TMT Conservation District use permit approved by the Board of Land and Natural Resources in September 2017 and upheld by the Hawaii Supreme Court in October 2018. The civil construction package including construction and grading plans and specifications, was submitted by UH Hilo on February 3rd of this year and underwent extensive review by the DLNR Office of Conservation and Coastal Land staff and myself. Based on this review, the TMT project has met all pre-construction conditions and requirements contained in the Conservation District Use Permit. Having met these requirements, they may begin construction under the CDUP. Okay. Good morning and aloha. The Hawaii Supreme Court opinion that both the governor and Chair Case referenced followed a four-year legal process in which many voices were heard and numerous parties participated. In affirming the decision of the Board of Land and Natural Resources to issue a permit for the construction of the last telescope footprint on Mauna Kea, the court carefully examined the board's review of Mauna Kea from a cultural, a traditional, a historical, an environmental, and a scientific standpoint. This decision of the Hawaii Supreme Court is the law, and it must be respected. The decision also gave clarity clarity upon which many people in our community and around the world have relied upon. The notice to proceed was issued pursuant to the Hawaii Supreme Court's order, and it allows people in our community, construction workers, project manager, managers, to begin work on the telescope. We hope that during the course of this proceeding and of this process, that cultural practitioners will continue to come to Mauna Kea that those who are employed by the existing observatories will continue to be able to go to work, that all who come to Mauna Kea will continue to engage in activities uninterrupted. The state will do what it can to ensure the rights of all who are engaged in lawful conduct are protected. Now, this includes the right to engage in speech, and that's speech about the telescope. But it is very important, as the governor noted, to remember that this speech is part of a much larger conversation about the stewardship of Mauna Kea. And there are leaders in our community, including Mayor Kim, who are leading this conversation. It is important that it not stop, even as the telescope is constructed. For safety, we encourage that this conversation happen somewhere other than on Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea has very limited resources. 
Restroom facilities are limited. Water is rationed. The, the roads are unimproved. And even under normal conditions, they can be dangerous. And altitude is also a danger of Mauna Kea. As we know in the recent weeks, altitude sickness can come on quickly, and it can cause physical damage. Medical facilities are not available on Mauna Kea, and therefore, it is difficult to respond to the quick onset of altitude sickness, which can be potentially life-threatening. When construction proceeds, the individuals who will be working on the telescope are going to need safe access to the worksite. They are going to need safe conditions under which they work. We hope that people will not provoke those who are lawfully engaged in building the con uh, constructing the telescope, and we certainly hope that no one provokes a confrontation with the law enforcement officers who are going to be there to protect their rights. We are all in this together, and we hope that everyone who comes to Mauna Kea takes responsibility for their actions, their words, and their decisions. The safety of our community depends upon people respecting the law and each other. Mahalo. Good morning, aloha kakahiaka. This notice to proceed is an important milestone in what has been a decade-long open and consultative process through which every requirement in statute, policy, and procedure has been met. We know there are members of the community, including within the University of Hawaii, who oppose this project. We are truly sorry for the pain some of them feel, and we fully respect their rights under the First Amendment to protest in a peaceful and lawful manner. The project is also supported by many, and we firmly believe in the benefits of bringing the most advanced telescope in the world to the most magnificent and awe-inspiring mountain in the world. Beyond the substantial lease rent, community benefits, and commitment to a workforce pipeline for the local community, the 30-meter telescope represents a pinnacle of innovation and human imagination. It will enable humankind to explore from Hawaii not only the stars and galaxies around us, but to stretch the bounds of discovery by helping us see farther into our universe than ever before, literally back toward the beginning of time and our very origins. With this permit, the University of Hawaii also accepts increased commitments to stewardship. Among our commitments are that TMT will be the last new site developed for astronomy on Mauna Kea. And while this one new telescope will be constructed, five current telescopes will be de decommissioned and their sites restored. We are inspired by Mayor Kim's vision for Mauna Kea as a beacon of hope and discovery for the world that celebrates the Hawaiians' historic explorations of the ocean and their groundbreaking discoveries in the skies above. And as resolved by the Board of Regents of the University of Hawaii, we stand ready to work not only with Hawaii County, but also with the state, OHA, and all others in the community committed to the collaborative stewardship of Mauna Kea's cultural, natural, education, and scientific resources all who are willing to come together to synergistically integrate traditional wisdom and culture with modern science to build a global model of harmonious and inspirational stewardship for Mauna Kea. Thank you. Um, just a few final comments. I want to say a few words about how we move forward together. To all those who participated in the long legal challenge process on this permit, mahalo for following patiently through our important legal processes. We are a society of laws, and the administrative and judicial processes in place ensure that all issues are considered. To those of you whom the very act of construction of Mauna Kea on Mauna Kea is painful, we understand, we acknowledge, and we respect your feelings and your views. We recognize that the mountain will not be the same as we move forward. To those of you who want to exercise your constitutional right of free speech, 
to express your opinion on this project. We welcome your voice and we remind you of your obligation to conduct yourself in compliance with laws and without endangering the lives of others. To those of you from outside Hawaii or even outside Hawaii Island who take a position on this project, please respect our process. The world is not black and white. This is not an oil pipeline, it is a telescope to look into the very origins of life in the universe. We have worked a long time to hear each other and to make a choice as a collective community. To the many who support this project, let us always hold all views as one. Let us always touch the mountain as we gaze out beyond the sky. We are available for any questions. Governor, will the state or any other authorities reduce the actual date of construction, or will it happen in secret? We are working with the project um, planners, and we'll be coordinating with them as necessary. Our, our hope is that we can provide as much information as possible to disclose. We have a number of security, safety considerations that we have to take into account, but it is our hope that we can be as open about the information as is possible. You've asked uh, protesters, people who want to express their rights to free speech, to, to go elsewhere besides Mauna Kea, but people are already planning to be there when this date happens. They are planning to be arrested. What is your reaction to that? Well, that is why we made this plea today. And there is a difference, of course, between lawful speech and unlawful conduct. And that is going to be an important distinction as we move forward because there are rules already in place on Mauna Kea. The Forest Area Reserve has rules. There are rules just about how you engage in conduct. And we need to make sure that the access is available for the workers who have to get to the site. And so in terms of balancing the interests between those who have a right to engage in speech and the security and the safety concerns, we will be continuing to monitor that as things develop. This news conference comes up, you got to expect that people are going to see it and they're, they're going to start crowding up there. There's already an arrest uh, today on the mountain. Your thoughts on that? You know, certainly uh, we wanted to uh, informed the public that the notice to proceed uh, was issued. As discussed, it's an important milestone in the project, and the project has all the approvals that it needs to begin construction. Governor, have you been in talks with the National Guard in terms of response to whatever action happens during the construction? You know, we are making plans to ensure that the health and safety of all in our community. And once again, we are committed to ensuring the rights, the laws uh, for everyone involved. What do you think the difference would be this time around than the last time TMT tried to send its crews up there? You know, I, th I do think that there is a fundamental difference in that the legal process has concluded. The Supreme Court did um, review the permit and has decided that it is lawful to proceed. structures that were removed today and what happened to them? Sure. Uh, as, as the governor said, there were four structures. There were two that were located at the summit. They were actually located right where the telescope is to be constructed. There was a another structure that was located um, across from Hale Pohaku, and then there was also one that was located on DHHL property. And it was a, even though there were different agencies, appropriate state agencies who were removing the unauthorized structures, it was a coordinated effort for security and for safety reasons. These were considered as religious structures by groups of people. So what happened to the items or rocks or whatever may have been about them? Or where are they now? Yes, they were very carefully dismantled. The property was uh, taken to a place uh, in Docares, um facility, so they will be available for the individuals who want to claim them as property. Uh, yes, that Mauna Kea has many culturally significant structures on it, and these uh, four were uh, unauthorized. They were not to be where they were located. There are rules about constructing 
things on Mauna Kea. Obviously, TMT had to get a permit. Permission is needed. Uh, there are a whole lot of stewardship reasons as to why those rules matter and why those types of structures in these areas have to be authorized. What are the current rules as far as, I know there were some changes the last time around when people were gathering, parking, camping overnight uh, up on the mountain. What are the current rules as far as that goes? Uh, camping is not allowed in the forest reserve without a permit. Uh, structures have to be authorized. Uh, just to follow up, the um, material from the upper um, uh, Hale Pohaku in the summit is in the custody of Docare Hilo, and the material from uh, the DHHL site, uh, you would refer people to DHHL. Did the structures interfere, would they interfere with any construction activities that would be uh, potentially, they were removed because they're unauthorized structures. Were they related to TMT at all, the, the uh, structures, the full structures? Uh, uh, yes, it's all it's all tied together. The the two structures at the summit uh, were determined. They were reviewed by the Hawaii Supreme Court as well as the board. They were determined not to bear any traditional customary significance. Um, and there was also the advisory council uh, for UH, the Native Hawaiian Advisory Council, that also uh, reviewed the Ahu construction, uh, the, the the two Ahu up there. So they were removed because they were located right where TMT is to be constructed. So they had to be removed. And the the other two below, the other two? Yes, the other two. So the other uh, structure was at Hale Pohaku, that was on DLNR property in the Forest Reserve, and that was also built uh, in response to 2015's TMT activities. Um, and it was removed as well because, again, when we are looking at enforcing rules and ensuring that the rules are enforced, the types of structures that are built need to be in compliance with the law. Will they make uh, the construction easier? Well, certainly for the ones that are located on the site where the telescope is built, that they were they, they had to be removed. And then, yes, it is a safety and a security reason. We do need to ensure that those um, structures are not erected for safety and security reasons. Regarding access to Mauna Kea, will people still be allowed to go up there just to view sunset, sunrise, all of those types of things while construction is um, you know, we are going to uh, continue to provide access to Mauna Kea. Uh, there may be periods during the construction activity where it will be necessary to close the road or close other parts of Mauna Kea um, to ensure that the safety of all the workers and everyone involved can um, can be maintained. Going all the way up there, you went up on the mountain when this was all happening and you met with any other passionate beliefs. Uh, they're willing to get arrested. Some of those cases got thrown out. This time around, you went through the legal process. Well, what do they face, you know, if they go ahead and do that again? I mean, I just think that we, you know, we're committed to. Uh, allow everyone to exercise their rights. Um, just as much as the project has uh, received all um, approval and uh, legally permitted to proceed with construction, uh, those who want to protest can uh, peacefully um, protest. Um, and we, as we said, want to continue to provide access um, to the mountain in as normal a process as possible. We are committed to the health and safety of everyone and certainly will be taking the actions that we believe necessary to assure that safety. Governor, how can the public find out when the actual construction will be? Really, if there is no date being released right now. Right, and um, the NTP became public today. So as the governor mentioned, uh, the TMT uh, project managers will be coordinating with the appropriate agencies. And to the extent and to the greatest extent that we can, we will be making that information public. But again, there are these safety and security reasons that we have to take into consideration. And when you say making that public, I don't think we've decided that yet. Can you describe um, what measures or guidelines there will be to, to ensure that there's more safety, that uh, there's access, but that protesters can be, still be there? Do so, you have any uh, a plan that you can describe to us? 
two, two responses to that. First is that we are hoping that everything can continue now without disruption, that people can continue to engage in their cultural practices, continue to work on the mountain, and that those activities will not be disrupted in any way during the course of this whole construction period. Uh, but it is the job of law enforcement to prepare for any and all situations, and, and that is what we are doing as well. What, what kind of law enforcement presence do you expect to have up there? Uh, again, we have to see uh, what type of reaction is, is necessary. It, it really depends on, on the type of activity that is engaged in on, on, on the mountain. Uh, of course, there are multiple state agencies that are involved for the construction. Hawaii County is uh, lead, and the state is in support of that. Any other questions? Okay. Yes. Tim? Uh, there's a, um, a, a hearing uh, on um, pollution water pollution on the, on the 25th of June um, with the NDPS permit. And how does, doesn't that have to be held before the new permission to go on, or is it separate? Uh, no, that is just a renewal. So that permit has already been issued. The process has already happened, and there is an existing permit. A renewal is a pretty straightforward process. Uh, Dr. Anderson elected to have a hearing, and so there will be a hearing, but there has already been an extension granted on the renewal, and there is no new permit that is intended to be issued or needed to be issued. So if there's any information at the hearing that might uh, look bad on the project and its water pollution, that won't be considered? Well, there is. there was a 30-day comment period already. The public had a pretty robust opportunity to comment on it, and I believe the Department of Health did take a look at the variety of comments that were submitted, and nothing was any cause for concern. But again, the permit um, really looks at whether or not there's been any substantial change from when the permit was initially uh, issued, and my understanding is there has been no substantial change. All right. Thanks, everybody.